Today, we're talking color science. Do colorists need to know color science? How much color science do colorists need to know? And how is your grading practice going to benefit when you do know color science? So let's start with that first question. Do colorists need to know color science? This is about to be the shortest video of all time. Watch. No, no, you don't need to know color science. You can color grade without knowing any color science whatsoever. If you want proof, I can give it to you right now. I can sit you down here at my workstation right now. I can show you my reference monitor. I can put my control surface in your hands and I can say, hey, mess with those until you like what you see on that. And if I gave you enough time and you had a decent eye, you could get to a good result. You would then be a colorist and you wouldn't have needed to use any color science to get there. So the answer to the first question is no, you don't need to know color science. However, I think a better question to ask is what kind of benefits can I expect from increasing my knowledge of color science and how deep should I go with increasing that knowledge of color science? So what we're going to do today is break things down into what I think of as sort of three levels of color science literacy. And I want to define those levels for you and give you a sense of what you can expect at each of those levels, the level of knowledge that uh, you're going to have attained when you get to them and the benefits you can expect to reap once you do get to those levels of color science knowledge. Okay. So let's start with number one, first level of color science knowledge. This is one that if you've been hanging out with me here on the channel for a little bit, you might be well on your way to, you might already be at this level. Level one of color science is really just starting to have an internal grasp of what color management really means. Color management is where we have the most contact with color science as colorists. And if you are starting to move from a place of setting things into certain positions and setting drop down, down menus in a certain way, because Cullen told you to, if you're starting to move away from that and starting to understand, well, I'm selecting DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate as my working space because it has a large color volume and a large dynamic range. You're starting to understand the why. You're starting to understand how to troubleshoot when shots aren't looking quite right as you set up your color management. If you're starting to get a better grasp, get more fluent in the language of color management, then you are starting to get into level one of color science knowledge. And that is a level I think we should all aspire to as colorists because it makes for such a value add to your practice. Of course, color managing at all, even if you're not even at level one, if you're just following my instructions, that is itself a huge value add. But if you actually understand what's under the hood, your confidence goes up, your speed goes up, your ability to troubleshoot goes up. So that's a level I think any colorist should aspire to if they really wanna be able to offer great value to their clients. Having that level one knowledge of color science really has a tangible impact on the value that you can offer to your clients. So that's level one. And if we want proof of that, we can do an experiment we've done many times here on the channel where we can do a shootout between me trying to grade up my shot from log by hand as quickly as possible and make it look as good as I can, and then do the alternative scenario where I simply go in and in this case, turn my color management back on and look at the normalized image that I'm getting as a result. The color management is going to win every time. So really in a visual, if you want to talk about what's the benefit of this kind of level one of color science knowledge, it's the difference between this and that. It's a huge value add. It's something, as I said, we should all aspire to as colorists. Let's click forward a little bit. Let's talk about level two. Level two is something else that we have touched on here on the channel. We don't get as deep into it here on the channel, but it is something that we've touched on. And level two, I would define as starting to become more comfortable with look development and with the creative color science that you really need to begin to grasp if you want to be effective with your look development. So that can start very, very simply. It doesn't necessarily need to be complex. It can start as simply as an exercise we've done many times here on the channel of going in and setting up a creative contrast curve where we're being mindful to preserve our middle gray. So if we go in and use my DaVinci wide gamut mid gray uh, power grade here, and I go in and I create a new serial node, I'm gonna gang my channels back together, and I eyedropper here to anchor my mid gray, and I delete this, and I'm now drawing a contrast curve while being mindful not to move middle gray, that's color science. And that's in fact a bit more in-depth color science than knowing that you need to move from Airy Log C4 to DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate to Rec 7 or 9 Gamma 24. That's level one. Level two is now beginning to implement creative looks in the most advantageous way with the least amount of compensations 
by using not only your eye, but using some color science, such as knowing where your mid-gray is, how to anchor a curve against that mid-gray point, and build a curve around there. And the look development can really go forward from there, and you can build out all kinds of interesting things here in Resolve. You could build out a split toning scheme like we've talked about here before. And another thing that kind of falls somewhere toward the maybe upper end of level two here is something else that we've gotten a lot of fun out of here on the channel. That's this subtractive saturation node that I've shown you guys before, where we're going in and setting our color space to HSV and turning off channels one and three. Do you wanna know how I figured this out, how I arrived at this? It wasn't by mistake. It wasn't by just trying every single possible combination of color modes and channels. It was as I was beginning to learn color science and going, interesting, that HSV color model does some aesthetically pleasing things on my images. What would be an easy way for me to start using it in my color grades inside of Resolve? What would be a way I could build a sort of alternative form of saturation? That's how I discovered this subtractive saturation trick right here within Resolve. So we're in the level two area right now. You're really beginning to leverage color science and a increasing knowledge of color science to tailor and customize and finesse what you are doing to your images, whether that is in the uh, sort of look development context and you're beginning, you're beginning to build those look development chops, or in the case of this subtractive saturation tool, this is something of course that you can use at the individual shot level. And uh, it's something that again, you can only do with a bit more knowledge of color science, or perhaps you're just picking up the tricks from me, but that inspiration, those ideas, those value adds to the aesthetics of your grades, those are things that start to appear when that knowledge of color science begins to deepen, okay? So that's level two. Level two is a level we don't all need to get to. I'll be honest with you, I know many colorists who are not at level two and who are still doing good work, and we're really starting to touch on a level now where there are colorists who may not be at level two themselves, but they have someone nearby who is. They have a color science team. They have a more technically minded color science uh, colleague who supports their efforts. So it doesn't necessarily need to be you. And we're going to return to that point later on today. It may be that you don't want to climb from level two up to level three or from level one to level two. But in those cases, I would suggest if you're not going to, or if it's not a high priority, maybe it is valuable to see if you can get someone into your sphere who does have that level of knowledge, because that is something I often see with highly effective, highly skilled uh, and uh, very billable colorists, is even if they don't know something, they've got someone nearby who does, okay? So that's level two. You're really moving up from the basics of color space and moving from color space A to color space P. And now you're beginning to speak the language of color science and use it to further your creative goals. And really that is gonna be the uh, through line that continues as we move into level three. Level three is pretty elite level of color science. That's where you are beginning not only to understand color science enough that you can use it for creative inspiration, but you're actually beginning to build tools that express your creative agenda. So we just looked at a couple things that really belong in kind of like the level two category, this subtractive saturation, and this split toning scheme that we have here. But I'll show you guys some examples of some things that have come for me as a result of making it up to that kind of level three of color science literacy. You can start to build automated tools that do things which you often want to, such as drawing a split tone curve, something that is kind of fun for me now that I've reached that level three, uh, you know, like, like uh, tier of color science, is that I've drawn my last split tone curve for my looks. I don't need to draw this manually anymore because I can go into the tool that I built that allows me to do this automatically. And now I can just increase the strength and I can pick out a hue, check out these swatches that I've got down here. And I can say, well, I wanna have my shadow hue be more of a blue or, or rather more of a green or more of a cyan. I can really go in and articulate that wherever I wanna see it. I can do the same thing with my highlights. I can tailor and customize a split tone curve without having to manually draw things. And I can simply parameterize the things that I think are significant, that I think make the difference in a good split tone scheme. And then I just have to invoke the tool anytime I want to draw my own split tone. So this is the kind of benefit that you see out of reaching that third level. Another example of this would be taking that subtractive saturation trick that I talked about and implementing it into a tool where I can 
apply saturation in more than one domain. I can do it in what I'm calling a spherical domain or in a subtractive domain, and I can work my gamma of my saturation against my gain of my saturation. I can see it visualized here. I can mix in between these different scenarios for saturation. So I've got more creative latitude and more precision control as a result of having made it to level three. Now, what do we have to say about level three? How necessary is that for the majority of colorists and what are the benefits of being there? Well, you've seen some of the benefits. How strictly necessary is it? I would say it's the least necessary of the three levels that we've looked at. This is really uh, getting into elite level, nearly professional color science. And if you attain this level, you're really starting to begin to practice color science for color science sake. Yes, in the case of the uh, examples that I just gave you, these are tools that I'm using to further my creative practice, but you're also putting yourself in a position if you make it to level three, to be able to practice color science in a variety of contexts, to be able to do look development, not only for yourself, but for others, to be able to develop custom tools for uh, not only yourself, but for others. These are all things, by the way, that I do in my professional practice. So there really is a continuum. And as you start to reach that upper end, you're going to see less of a day-to-day -day direct impact, like game changer level of impact on your personal grading practice. Those changes and gains will still be there, but you're also going to begin to moving into the, begin to be moving into the realm of being a practitioner of color science itself and being able to, uh, uh, apply color science and offer color science, not only to your own color grading practice, but to the color grading practice uh, and to the color grading needs of those around you. That's something I find really exciting and energizing, and I've really enjoyed the journey to getting there. But I'm not going to stand here and tell you that that's something you strictly have to do in order to be a great colorist. And in fact, that's a great place to wrap us for today. That's the thought that I want to leave you with today. Regardless of how far this ladder you choose to climb, how far you feel you want to climb, how much energy and uh, time you want to invest in attaining these different levels, here would be my radical piece of advice to you. Decide how far you want to climb, decide how invested you are in reaching level one, level two, or level three, and then find someone in the long run, doesn't have to be overnight, doesn't have to be tomorrow, but I would look at getting someone nearby, get someone in your sphere who's at that level three. Because one thing is true, if you look at the best colors, colorists in the world, even colorists who are not the most color science literate, who don't know the greatest amount of color science in the world, look at any one of those colorists and they work in the same building as a color scientist who's at level three and beyond. So they can collaborate with that person and they can get what they need in terms of their color science needs for their creative practice met by that person. So that would be my kind of parting advice. Do you need to know color science? No, but somebody does because it's going to benefit your grading practice no matter how deep you go with it. So it's simply a question of how deep you want to go with it and whether or not you can find someone to partner with, to collaborate with, to support you uh, and uh, offset whatever level you have reached and uh, support you uh, in reaching the uh, additional levels of color science, the additional benefits that you can find by going even further on that journey. So I hope that's some helpful ideas for you. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a while because there's so much talk about color science out there and uh, there's a lot of conflicting advice that like you have to know color science or color science is unimportant. And I really think that there's a medium somewhere in between where we can be empowered by starting to learn color science and where we can also begin to become, remember that I'm using the word practitioners of color science. You don't have to be a color science expert. There's no lives on the line here. You can become a practitioner. You can become an enthusiast of color science, and it's okay to make mistakes and learn things along the way. That's marked my entire journey as a color scientist, and I've loved every minute of it. So if you are curious about color science, I can tell you firsthand, it will make a significant contribution to your grading practice. And I can also tell you that if you're able to add value to your grading practice, nobody else gets to tell you how and when you can practice color science, that's up to you to decide. And if you want that knowledge, if you want to learn it, it's out there to be acquired.